Well, hello there, everyone. You've tuned in UXW Bill. I've got something a little bit different for you today, different from the usual kind of videos that I do here on my channel. Although I expect as time wears on and I get my name out there more and more and gain some experience, you probably will see more of this. I have somebody that's got an old vending machine that they no longer want, and it's not old enough to be anything valuable or worth saving, although I did think about taking it off their hands. I, I think it dates from sometime in the early 2000s, and they don't want it any longer. I don't have anywhere to put it. They found somebody that'll take it, an electronics recycler of all things, but before the electronics recycler will even touch it, much less transport it, they need to know that the refrigerant charge has been removed from it. And that's where I come in, and that's what we're going to do today. I've got my recovery machine sitting over here. I have a tank in the back. I've got the manifold gauge set, all that good stuff. And yes, just in case anyone's wondering and doesn't happen to know, I most certainly do have my EPA 608 Universal Certification. <clears throat> Boy, you got to love these Illinois roads, don't you? <laughs> so I'm going down there right now, and we'll see what we can find when we get there. Here we are, and this is the vending machine in question. I've never seen anything quite like this before, and I really can't tell you for certain how it's designed to work, but I wonder if this thing is not intended to sell both dry snacks and soft drinks of some description. You have these knobs out here on the outside where you insert your money, and when you do so, it allows this coil to turn and ultimately dispense a product. Presumably it falls out down here somewhere. But when you open this up, which it says to do, if you're looking for a cold drink, there they are. And you have more of these knobs that again you can stick your money in, turn them, and your product will be dispensed right underneath there. So it's definitely a mechanism and a machine for that matter, like I've never seen before. Like I say, I've got nowhere to put it. Otherwise, I might well have asked about taking it off their hands. So we might as well get down to brass tacks, but I might have run into a bit of a snag. Because what I'm seeing when I look around here is a lack of any power outlets whatsoever. And that's a problem because I need to run my recovery machine. Maybe there's an outlet outside or something. I'll do a little bit of looking around. Unfortunately, there's nobody here that I can ask today. All right, all the way in back here. I did finally find myself an outlet. No idea if it works. Something's plugged into it, of course. Amazing the stuff you find in these kinds of places. Of course, that's pretty far away from where I need to be. Not that it may ultimately end up making any difference. You see, with these little systems, only rarely are there ever service ports attached to them, so if you want to gain access to the system, you either have to install something permanently or temporarily. And look what somebody's done. Yep, they left a little bullet piercing valve on the system, which would strongly suggest that not only has this thing been serviced in the past, but it's also probably got a leak in it somewhere. So let's get my gauges on there and see if there's even any reason to go about pulling the gas off of this thing if there's any left, which there may very well not be. It's my understanding that it's bad practice to leave these things in a system permanently, but apparently it's quite commonly done. So let's just go ahead and see what we get here, if we get anything. Yeah, there's a little bit of pressure in the system, but not much. It's basically flat on gas. What a rainy day we're having today, too. I don't know if the phone will pick it up, but I love the sound of rain on a rooftop. Well, as it happens, I decided I wanted to save the bullet piercing valve that was on this system. I know these things are not worth a whole lot of money. I don't have all the pieces to this one, but hey, a tool saved is a tool earned. So, just to stay on the right side of the EPA and everything, I went ahead and hauled out the recovery machine and my tank of contaminated refrigerants. I pulled off whatever this thing would give me, 
really wasn't enough in there to even do a proper job of purging my hoses. So I wouldn't be surprised if I've managed to put some air <laughs> into my tank of contaminated refrigerants. But oh well, I just wanted to make sure that everything was staying as legal and above board as possible because I don't want to get in any trouble. So I erred on the side of caution. Okay, so here's something I'd love to know the story behind. Right across the way from where I was working on that vending machine is this packaged unit. I think this is probably a York machine. Take a look at this. At first I thought maybe the wind had just blown this cover off of the compressor access door. But then I quickly realized that the cover for all the electrical is sitting here. Nobody ever bothered to put it back. And I even thought that maybe this unit was still functional, even though I'm sure all this electrical switch gear loves being left exposed to the elements. No, well, it looks like a little something's missing in there. I certainly don't think I'm going to touch this, just in case it is live. This thing's puked out parts everywhere. I don't know that it would take all these different size filters. Maybe somebody just didn't feel like cleaning up after themselves. <laughs> I don't know. Mm, this doesn't look very good either. I'm guessing this poor thing hasn't run in a very, very, very long time. Armstrong Air, it says. wonder how old it is. certainly hope they've closed that up on the inside because I can't help but think that would be a great avenue for anything that was seeking warmth to try and get in that building and cause havoc. Mice, raccoons, other pests. 